All right, it's Labor Day 2016 and another gorgeous day. <clears throat> Pretty warm. Got to really trim those trees. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get up to too much today. I think, I think we'll work on the 59 for a little bit. We'll uh, try to get that rear panel detached now that I've got some sharp drill bits. I may just uncover the corner of that and uh, go to town and see how far I can get on that today. If it's not too hot. We'll come back. So here's where we left off on the 59. Just trying to get that uh, closeout panel off. And we got a little bit of a start on it, but we're going to uh, see if we can continue to drill those spot welds out. Alright. All right, just a quick shot of how we're doing here. We've got the uh, the old uh, closing plate off, and um, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty rusty. Anyway, got some rust inside here, but uh, we're not going to do too much to this car. We're going to uh, probably reach in there with a sandblaster, and uh, we're going to clean that up as best as possible, and then uh, probably give it a quick coating of. Uh, some sort of primer or paint, maybe Pour 15. I've got some Pour 15 daubers. I could probably uh, get that in there fairly far. We'll blow out the rest of the rust that's sort of caught in the channel down there uh, in between. We'll blow it out from the other side. But this is what we're, uh, we're starting with anyway. I'm probably going to try to get this nacelle off of here, which entails drilling out some spot rivets over here, although I can't really see where it's spot riveted. And then it's sort of tucked under the flange here. Um, underneath this, uh, this is part of the rear valence, and then this is part of a another top section to this nacelle. It's a, sort of another sort of a sandwich in here. The nacelle that's at the back here, if you can see that, and then this plate goes over top. So we'll have to probably create these two sections: this little nacelle, at least the bottom part of it, uh, and then this top piece, which I actually used. To, I had to do on the 60 as well. So. Uh, if I'd known I was going to have a 59, I probably would have kept the templates to, uh, to remanufacture this. Um, along the back uh, edge here, we need some obviously some work in here. This is actually part of the uh, part of the rear valence as well, so that's going to have to be repaired after I take this section out. And then we've got a bunch of pinholes here along the edge, which we're going to have to fix up. We'll probably end up bringing the repair back uh, ahead of it, and then wrap around the edge. So we'll probably end up doing that in a couple different sections, maybe halfway down to here and then we'll finish the bottom half because of that slight, slight curvature. I probably prefer to do that in a couple different sections. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you a quick look at that. This is not bad actually, this uh, this closeout panel here. I'm going to probably drill uh, or fill up all the um, the holes with weld before I go ahead and uh, I actually have a spot welder so once I get that close in plate, and I'm not sure whether I'll make that close in plate, I probably will. Again, this is the budget build so uh, I may just actually make a triangular uh, style closing plate with the, um, the cage nuts on the inside as you see here. So uh, I wish this would come out of a little bit better uh, so I could use it as a template. But uh, it's not something that can be seen, this thing. It's just got to be functional. All right, guys. That's it for now. So we're just trying to carefully take this uh, nacelle piece off, even though it's pretty rusted here, and I think that's going to come apart with it. But you can see I just sort of drilled the spot welds out. I've been using a, just a cold chisel go along and tap along there to be able to detach that piece. And you can see it's moving. Here is going to be a bit of a challenge because it's, like I said, it's pretty rusty at the top section here where it joins onto this top plate. So I think what we're going to try to do is remove this as a unit now. So I'm going to work on this side of it. I do see a uh, spot weld right there. So that's the one we're going to go after first. And then we'll uh, move outwards from there. So I'm just trying to be fairly methodical about uh, my approach to this and, uh, you know, drilling one spot rivet at a time and then, or one spot weld at a time and then moving, you know, slowly, you know, tapping along gently and, and lifting as I go until I find the next spot rivet if it's not, uh, sometimes they're not very visible. I keep saying spot rivet, I meant spot weld. I don't know why I have rivets stuck in my head. Anyway, so just sort of methodically go around and uh, find all the spot welds drill them out and sort of tap and eventually you'll get there. You want to try to keep as much of the uh, existing, you know, the good existing metal 
as possible in the uh, in the best possible shape that you can in order to have a reference point for when you go to put this back together. So that's the objective here is not to uh, destroy it but to try to keep it all intact so it requires a bit of patience and uh, you know I think in my first or second restoration sometimes I might have been a little bit more hasty than I should have and just sort of hacked it all apart and said yeah there it's apart but realistically the best way to go about it is just to take your time go slow be methodical and try not to destroy everything in your path it'll be easier when you go back to put it back together all right we'll come back all right so here's that piece in uh, out in one piece and uh, see we didn't do too much damage outside of the rust that was already there so uh, yeah that gives us a lot of uh, extra access to fix some other areas like the uh, bottom of the uh, of the trunk floor for example and the edge of the uh, where the valence wraps over the rear valence wraps over to the side panel will uh, fix that rusted out area as well so just thought I'd give you a quick look at that so again we'll have to fabricate something to repair this but uh, we'll do our best and we'll come back that'll be another day always amazed at how much rust and debris you get out of these things when you start restoring them I mean there's the pile from the other day here's the pile from today so it's uh, it's amazing that there's anything of the car left when you're done with it